Little Couplets. Welcome back to another Bear With Me with me, Bear Elliot. There are certain movie lines that are etched upon our little gay hearts. I'm sure you know them. Toto, I don't think we're in Kansas anymore. Frankly, my dear, I don't give a damn. Or, Molly girl, you're in danger. These iconic lines from movies, okay, we've kind of adapted them into our gay society and made them gay icons. I don't know so much about um, with Gone with the Wind, but yeah, let's just say it's a gay icon, because I mean, what gay boy did watch that a million times? Well, there's another gay icon movie that I had the privilege of finally seeing on the big screen. Now, I had seen this movie a million times. I could quote this movie a million times, but I've always seen it on the little screen. And I wasn't introduced to this movie until probably my, my late 20s. I don't know how I got through my early 20s and not know about this movie. What am I talking about? Mommy Dearest. And what is that line? Come on, say it with me. No wire hangers! Ah, oh, Joan Crawford. I got to see on the big screen during Columbus Pride, <sighs> Mommy Dearest. I love this movie so much. And I love it even more now that I saw it on the big screen. Now, if you have not seen Mommy Dearest, hand in your gay card right now. I am ashamed of you. But if you haven't, by strange chance, not seen this movie, you need to see this movie. And if you have the availability to see it, when it comes to the big screen, it's even more fun. Think about Rocky Horror Picture Show, but a gay twist. If you could have any more of a gay twist on Rocky Horror Picture Show. But this was a lot of fun. This was at the Ohio Theater. It was me and a group of friends. And I was like, I really want to see this movie. And they're like, really? It's Mommy Dearest. I'm like, yes, it's so good. I love it. I love it. I love it. I had my little fangirl moment. I've been a big fan of Joan Crawford, and this movie just, like, really solidified it, even though it doesn't have Joan Crawford. Okay, what is this movie? Okay, in a nutshell, this is the story of Joan Crawford adopting two little kids who we pretty much just focus on one little kid, Christina and Christopher, mostly Christina. This is actually Christina Crawford's autobiography, <laughs> kind of, slightly skewed towards the negative, when it came to her mother adopting her as a wee little baby and raising her to <laughs> in a house of nightmares. All right, we flash to the beginning of this movie to Joan Crawford. She's an aging, fading star. Her star is still, she's the, the Hollywood royalty, but it's starting to fade a little bit. She's not getting the roles that she once upon a time got, so she decides, okay, maybe her motherly instinct kicked in. Not so much. She decides that she's going to adopt a baby. So she tries to adopt a baby and they quickly tell her, no, you are an unfit mother. And their reasonings are kind of stupid, even though this child could be raised in a lap of luxury and given all of the the benefits of her celebrity brings to her, such as her cash and her wonderful house. But the adoption agency says, no, you've been divorced several times and you're a single woman late in age. And they say no. But Joan will not hear no. She decides that she's going to buy the baby. And it's not really told how exactly she came about the baby, but she got a baby. And it's little Christina. Baby, baby, Christina. Flash forward. Flash. Flash. Yeah. Flash forward. Yeah, flash forward. Because you flash back and you flash forward, I guess. All right. We speed forward in Christina's life to when she's just a little toddler and she's having a birthday party. And of course, all the paparazzi is there, by Joan's request, to photograph it and videotape and just reveal how much love this child has in her life. And also by this time, Joan has adopted a second child, Christopher. Now, Christopher is a very minor note in this movie. He pops up now and then and pretty much only has one line. And that's during this scene. And ooh. so Christina, okay. She is a little bit of a defiant child. And as she grows, she stands up for herself and isn't going to put up with her mother's nonsense. It starts to decay when Christina... She uh, refuses to eat her extremely rare meat. I don't even think it was cooked because 
According to Joan, it has all the vitamins. No, bitch, that's just more, that's just some raw ass meat. That's disgusting. That's how you get worms. At least that's what my mom always said. So Christina's a little defiant, and the big, the first scene is so you have the meat. Okay, there's another scene before that where Christina kind of like stands up to her mother when her mother raises her because Joan kind of sees her as competition, but that's before that scene. Okay, flash forward to the meat scene. So Christina does not want to eat her raw meat, and I don't blame you, girl. That's disgusting. So she literally sits there all day and pretty much all night, and then the next day Joan still has the meat and she wants Christina to eat it. It looks disgusting. Christina stands up for herself and does not eat the meat. You go, Christina. You go, girl. Well, things don't go well as things progress with poor Christina. So from here, we uh, continue to have some interaction between them. And Joan has several bad relationships during this time. She gets dumped a lot. And when Joan gets dumped, she wants everybody else to feel as bad as she does. So she basically... Um, she gets drunk and goes into Christina's room one night and notices that she has a wire hanger. And this is the great thing about seeing this movie live is that when these scenes come up, everybody reacts to them. Like, Christina, get me the axe. And no wire hangers. You get to interact with these. Now, I don't want to give away the whole entire plot, but we follow Christina into being beaten and child of beaten. I mean, she's getting beaten, girl, with her wire hanger. And we go all the way into adulthood where... Joan Crawford, Christina has a cyst, an ovary cyst that, er uh, that kind of hemorrhages. And she's on a soap opera at that time because she's falling in her mother's steps. Of course, you know, kind of going with the Crawford. But her mother refuses to help her. Not at all. At this point, Chris uh, Joan has married the Pepsi tycoon who uh, kind of slips Christina a little bit of cash. Now, remember, this is all written from Christina's point of view. So we go through Christina as an adult and where did Christopher go during all this time? Because you don't ever see him for like 20 some years. I guess we're waiting for his book to come out. Well, Joan decides that since Christina can't be on her soap opera that she's going to replace her. And the character that she's replacing is 29. Joan is nowhere close to 29. So we follow these two hysterical characters and just the overacting of the look. It's just funny. It's hilarious when you actually have a group of people, no gay men, watching this movie. It is absolutely hysterical. And I've rambled on for almost eight minutes about this movie. I love this movie. At the end, I don't want to give you any spoilers for a movie that was produced decades ago. But, all right, fine. Christina and poor Christopher get cut out of the will. They get nothing. And Chris and. Christopher has this great line. He's like, that's mother. She always gets the last line. Oh, then Christina listens. She goes, not this time. Maybe not this time. So you have Christina's book come out, and that's what this whole entire movie is about. You need to go see this. If you've not seen this yet, you need to go see it. It's amazing. It's incredible. I love it, love it, love it. So, you know, this doesn't fall under my 52 movies in the year 2016 that I'm reviewing, but this is a great movie. It's a great time to go see it, especially during Pride Month. We only have, a, like, a couple days left. Mm, so sad. I love this month so much. All right, so have yourself a wonderful day, and just remember, no wire hangers. <laughs> Until next time, bye, Goblets! <laughs>